We are back live at the Muhammad Ali Center in Louisville, which opened in 2005 as fans lay flowers there. And our own very own Diane Sawyer, who was also from Louisville, joined Ali and his wife Lonnie there in 2007. Diane was treated to a guided tour by the couple, taking in everything from the champ's childhood bicycle that got him started boxing to the story of how he met Lonnie, the woman who has been by his side for 30 years in sickness and in health. How are you? Nice to see you. Thank you. A couple of hometown kids, Louisville kids, went out to see the world. We did. A museum not so much about history as the spirit of a kid from a little house in Louisville who could somehow see himself astride the whole world and who is still daring, laughing. How about this guy? He's the I'm pretty guy. The story is all here including the beginning. It was a red bike he got for Christmas. Someone stole it and he went to tell the, the policeman there that someone had stolen his bike and he was gonna beat them up. So smart, Joe Martin said, well, why don't you come learn to fight first? And then he got him into the boxing at the Columbia gym and the rest is history. But he was a child of segregation. And even though he had won his first Olympic gold medal, he came back home to hear these words at a restaurant counter. Hey, you. What you doing in here? You know I can't serve you. Now leave. Well, those are very harsh words, especially for a young person to hear. We sit together in the theater to watch a movie of his gigantic life. Based on the poem If by Rudyard Kipling, one of his favorites. If it says you can dream and not make dreams your master, walk with kings nor lose the common touch. Do you think it makes the Parkinson's harder for him to see those days? You know, Diane Muhammad not only looks at that film, just any film, and I don't know if he thinks about Parkinson's. He doesn't think about what's, you know, what his limitations are now or what it may keep him from doing. He always thinks about what he's going to do tomorrow. And I think when he looks back at those films, I think it inspires him as well. And sometimes I think he's in awe of himself. She told us he can still speak with her some in the morning, but the medication he takes for the Parkinson's makes it difficult by noon. There's such a conversation going on between the two of you all the time now. Well, yeah, so we have Muhammad, I, I understand Muhammad's signals, and it's sort of a, some of it's a silent conversation. I, I can look at his face, I can tell what he wants or what he's thinking. Also, in the museum, a photo of the day she met him. Is this the, the famous picture? That's the famous That's picture. What we talked about. As you see, I haven't changed much, Diane. <laughs> then 22-year-old Cassius Clay teased his awestruck little neighbor. Did he remember saying to you, I'm going to marry you when you grow oh, up? Oh, yes. But you know what, Diane? I have found out that Mom has said that to a lot of little girls. <laughs> it wasn't just me. <laughs> I can't say he said it to just me because it's not true. He had just been diagnosed with Parkinson's when they met. They've now been married 20 years. And you never feel robbed? No. No. Our life is so full, so rich. I mean, we have nothing to be sorry for, nothing to regret, and nothing to, to pout about. Back in the museum, a visitor can put their hand in a mold of Muhammad Ali's to hear about gratitude, giving back. There is a message. Children touch Muhammad's heart in a way, you know, I don't think anyone else can. And he calls them refugees from heaven. They're little angels. And he just believes, you know, that all children should have a bright future. He'd do anything he could to help them. Hey, what's up? I'm Layla. This is Layla. In another pavilion, it's his daughter Layla giving boxing lessons to people like me. I'm sorry you had to see that. Back at the elevator, an always mischievous Ali says, He's sure I'm younger what? than I say. 40. 40. <laughs> and in another pavilion, a tribute to a moment no one will ever forget, 1996, the Olympic Games. It was a big decision, but it was such an honor, such an honor. But when he tried to light the cauldron and it didn't light, I was thinking, it's not lighting. What's wrong? It's not lighting. He's holding it there. But once it lit, the swell of, of emotion that went through that crowd, through that arena, it was amazing. There were tears, there were shouts of joy. Like the words of the Kipling poem, if you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone. What is it you think he's saying in this moment to these athletes going forward? 
I think Muhammad would say, do as much as you can, because that's the way you will be remembered. God gives us special gifts, and the more God gives you, the more he expects.